And uh, it's very, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce my, uh, my colleague, uh, Josh Horwitz, uh, uh, who has been uh, such a leader on, on this issue for so long, and I've learned so much from him through the years, and I'm going to learn a lot from him today. Josh? Thanks, guys. Nice remarks. I appreciate it. Let me just get a drink of water here. Okay. <clears throat> we, um, a number of years ago, um, started evaluating this ballistic technology after the sniper incident because it was clear that after um, the ver one of the very first incidents was a shell casing left there. What did that shell casing mean? Why couldn't we find more information out about where the gun came from? Who bought the gun? What was the trail of the gun? And we undertook to understand this technology. And there's a lot of different technologies, and there's a number of things that Congress has already done on this issue, and I think there's some things that they could do on this issue that would be very important. But let me echo the, the uh, what Dennis talked a lot about unsolved crimes. I want to give a little bit of a face to that. We have way too many cold cases in the United States. We should be able to get more information from the evidence that we have. I've done some informal research on this, and we talked to the Boston Police Department. Um, thank you, Virginia. And um, we found that of the 1,300 shooting cases there, they recovered 636 cartridges, and that was the only piece of evidence that they got, the only piece of ballistic evidence they got. And those cartridges could provide a lot of information. They are routinely run through something called the NIBIN system, and I'm explaining to you what's good about NIBIN and what's limited about NIBIN. But the fact is, most of the, the vast majority of those cartridges yield nothing right now, even though it could yield much more. Uh, Congressman, we talked to your Sheriff Lee Baca, and we asked him, uh, Mike Fuhrer, our legislative sponsor in California, can you just give me a few examples of what this would mean in, Cal in California and to the Los Angeles law enforcement? And I put a number of examples that Sheriff Baca let us know about. And you can see young man shot and killed while walking to a restaurant, law enforcement Two shells, no leads, okay? And that's something we hear all the time. 14-year-old boy and an 18-year-old brother killed at a convenience store. Four shell casing, no leads. Roadside incident, a woman um, lured somebody over, <coughs> robbed, killed. Three shell casings, no leads. We have the technology to make those casings speak. And it seems to me that we need to take everything we use all the power we have to stop crime to solve crimes and this is not a panacea it's not going to stop all gun violence but you have physical evidence in these situations that are underutilized and that's what this is about getting the maximum amount of information the lowest impact and the lowest cost off that cartridge we congress has already authorized substantial program about ballistics identification. It's called the NIBIN program. It creates a database of guns collected from, uh, from cartridges and sometimes bullets collected from crime scenes. Um, that is deployed. They have these IBIS systems in 221 places around the United States and they're available for law enforcement. If you see the picture over here, you'll see there's no particularly identifying information on there. What they do is what examiners have done for almost 100 years, which is they examine the two casings they find under a microscope, and they look, and they look at the, un, the, the, the sort of accidental markings on these things. They put all these images into a crime database. And so what, the, so what that means is if you get a cartridge at a crime scene, you don't have any leads, you put it into the NIBIN system, and you scan these other crime gun cartridges, and you get what might be called a hit. You might match a cartridge from another crime scene. And what may that tell you? Well, there's no identification on those cartridges, so it may tell you nothing. It may tell you that they have another cartridge from an un for, un with an unidentified shooter. You have two cartridges from an un unidentified shooter. What do you do with it? It may be that the second hit already has some information. Maybe they know the person who used that gun. That would give you some information about the second cartridge you entered. But by themselves, these cartridges don't speak. So we've, we've entered about uh, 1.25 million cartridges in Nibin, and we've had 19,000 hits. In other words, 19,000 cartridges have matched. 
But what about the 1.24 whatever million other cartridges that don't match? They just sit there unable to speak even though we know they can. And part of that is, and if you take a look to the right, is where we have the sort of what the, 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 the a microstamp cartridge. The microstamp cartridge adds information. It doesn't take away. It doesn't mean that a forensic scientist doesn't need to look at it, because it, they do. But it adds identifying information, so you don't need to go, and you may not have to go into that crime database. You may have all the information from that cartridge case. The cartridge case will speak. Okay, NIBIN is a valuable system. Okay, in the report that we did after our investigation, you'll see we talk a lot about NIBIN, and it's an important forensic tool, it will f be useful for the foreseeable future even if microstamping passes because of course microstamping is prospective. NIBIN will have all sorts of applications for guns that have already been made and even guns that are microstamped. The markings that the gun makes that you use for NIBIN don't go away, they're just enhanced. It's the evolution of firearms technology and firearms identification. It's not a change. It's not saying we're going to substitute one system for the other. This takes the accidental markings and makes them intentional. Okay, Congress could do a couple things. They need to, they need to, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, sites, the 221 sites are underutilized. They need to be more fully utilized. There's some new software out there that would make these more, make the, the, the cartridges, they, the pic, they take these pictures of those two cartridges I showed before. They create an algorithm and they try to match these millions of cases. There's some new software that could be helpful there. Um, and, and there's a backlog, you know, there's a backlog of entering these things into NIBIN. But the bottom line is, the drawback with this is, is that we're looking at unintentional markings in NIBIN. And we're looking only to try to match it to another crime scene. Microstamping would give us the information that Dennis talked about to enter the trace system with nothing but the cartridge. No database, no matching, just the cartridge. Okay. These cartridges transfer microscopic numbers, letters, uh, 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 characters to the cartridge when they're fired. That means the cartridge itself will provide valuable investigative leads. I want to make this very clear. This is people talk about. There are no, you know, no new databases required. We don't need to do any type of registration. Nothing else but putting the serial number from the firearm to the cartridge. And as Dennis explained, the reason is we already have a trace system. We know how to trace guns. Congress has authorized and built a trace center. Microstamping would just allow you to access the trace center, get the data, which is who purchased that firearm, without the firearm. It's a big, t it's a big leap forward. You won't be able to run away from the crime scene, leave a cartridge, take the gun with you, and escape detection. It's a very important thing. Also, the price, people have talked to them about the price. Microstamping is inexpensive. It would be borne by the industry. Uh, on new firearms that they manufacture, uh, we estimate there's a couple of new technologies actually just being used right now, but somewhere between 15 cents and a dollar per firearm. If you've ever been to a firearm manufacturing plant, especially the modern ones, they have all sorts of machinery in them. This is not different than anything else that they do now. Um, and of course, I'm going to end, go back to the same point. We don't need a new database. We don't new, need any new information from purchasers. There's no new federal bureaucracy to create. That's what's elegant about this system. Okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. um, real quickly, there's just a, um, there's been a bill, in, bill introduced in California. There's a bill introduced uh, in Rhode Island. Um, the bill in California passed the Public Safety Committee and the Finance Committee and the Assembly. We're looking forward to go to the next, to the next, uh, to the next level, to the full floor. Um, and other states are looking at this. And of course, Representative Becerra is leading the way on this, and we thank you for that. Um, I'm done for now. Uh, there's a report here. Happy to answer questions when we're, uh, when we're through with this.